Well, a good afternoon. This is the Central Florida Computer Society's uh, Windows Special Interest Group, the WinSIG, for Sunday, June 11th, 2017. My name is Huey Poplock, and I lead this from my home in Bradenton, Florida, and we beam it out to the world, uh, but specifically to the Central Florida Computer Society main meeting in the library in Castleberry, Florida, the, the second Sunday of every month, and we do it for my home, and uh, we've been doing it uh, about two years remotely, and before that, probably about 13 to 15 years. Uh, we've had either Windows, and I think it was, there was a DOS SIG before the Windows SIG, so we've been doing this a long time. Uh, I want to start out by saying I did get a couple of remarks from some of the people who joined us online the last time. This is a SIG meeting of the Computer Society. It's not a formalized uh, business type meeting. It's like any SIG meeting that your group might have if you're a member of a user group. And so it's not polished. I don't have a lot of... Uh, uh, preliminary things that I'm going to do. I, I, I get the things together. I'm trying to introduce some things to you. Some things that I may not even use myself or I'm not an expert on, but I've at least uh, touched base with and I'm going to share with you. Uh, some things uh, I'm quite adept at. Other things may be very new to me as well. I have looked at them, but I'm not an expert in everything that I show you. So please don't expect uh, everything to be perfect. Everything that I say, uh, I'll have an answer for or I'm an expert on. I'm trying to just convey some information to you. I give you all of the links if I don't know everything or if there's something that you want to pursue more, the links are there for you. Some things I only uh, uh, touch the links and talk about the links and don't really get into the specifics either. Today we're going to do a, uh, a couple things based on the uh, conversations that go on uh, within the Computer Society, and I'll talk more about that in just a few seconds. What I would like to do is, let's see, let's close this, uh, would like to mention something that I'm working on besides Windows. Come on, open up. I'm working on something for, uh, to get away from Windows for people who have problems with Windows and maybe Windows is more than they can uh, uh, deal with are Chromebooks. And I am starting a, another SIG called the Chromebooks for Seniors SIG. I haven't set up a time for the meetings that will be strictly a uh, online meeting. Uh, you will be able to join us online or watch the recordings. I have started a, a website called the CB4S.net. It's partially done. I uh, still have a lot more material to add to it and, and make some changes and so on, but uh, you're, you can take a look at what I've done so far uh, by going to that website and be looking for some information about the Chromebooks for Seniors special interest group coming up. Uh, and your user group can use it as part of their meetings. You may share it with all of your members once we get going. Uh, if you have a preference to when you want to meet, uh, for those of you who are online, uh, if you'll email me and let me know or just mark in the, uh, in the chat box uh, a time frame, I'm looking at maybe the same Sunday I do these meetings, but a couple hours later, so those people in California and on the West Coast can join us. It would be in the afternoon, uh, so it would be late afternoon on the East Coast, early afternoon on the West Coast. Uh, but also, there's a lot of teachers who are going to want to be part of this as well, so it needs to be at a time that uh, they can join us. And so I'm looking at possibly a weekend day and to keep me from having too many days, maybe later the same day that I do this. Anyway, let's get back to the meeting uh, at hand. 
And uh, what we use for that is the, our own website for the WinSig, which is part of the Huey.net. Let me bring it up. I've got it. Uh, but And before we get too far into this, let's full screen this. If you'll notice on the right, I have put together, I, I'm going to send out a newsletter with information about this month's meeting and about next month, uh, and uh, let's put it this way, the coming up meeting and the just at the previous meeting, and maybe some Windows notes as well. And if you would like to get that newsletter, it's from MailChimp, so you can unsubscribe at any time. But if you'd like to subscribe, please do so on the right-hand side of Huey.net. You'll see, uh, you can see it there on the screen. All I need is your email address, first name, and last name. You'll be subscribed, and then you can unsubscribe at any time. I'm finding that it's been a lot of work to promote these uh, SIG meetings. I have to, I go to Facebook. I have uh, the tech SIG from CFCS. I have, uh, there's people that are on that from CFCS. So I have to get a letter to uh, uh, the newsletter editor and to the uh, website editor, and then I try to follow up, and then there's people around the country that aren't on any of those that I want to get the word out to. So I thought that a newsletter, uh, very short, maybe one page email uh, with just some news of what the meeting is, and then from last month's meeting, there'll be a link to the recording and the information and a reminder that if you missed the meeting, you can go back and, and see what's there. So please go ahead and subscribe to the mailing list. If you haven't done so yet, or if you did not receive the last one, uh, if you had signed up as a uh, uh, for the link to last month's meeting, uh, all of those people did get a copy of it and are on the mailing list. And as I say, you can unsubscribe at any time. Okay, let's look at what we're going to talk about today. I added something to this list today. Uh, let me make it even bigger here. There we go. I added something to the list today, and that's some internet speed tests. Uh, and if you got the newsletter, these weren't on there. But I found this article called Test Your Internet Speed, Tools and Apps Ranked Best to Worst. And I don't agree totally with the ranking <clears throat> because a lot of them I don't know. But I tried all of the ones that I have uh, posted on here. And then there are two that are apps that I have not tried from iTunes. I've listed there. What you have to do is go to iTunes and do a search for them. And if you want to, uh, they're free apps. But uh, one I use mostly is the Ookla speed test. And that's quite a ways down the list. And the way, one of the things they talk about it is they mention the fact that it's got a lot of ads in it, which it does. And then the other one I use is the Netflix, uh, Netflix Fastcom, which is just a couple above that. But just to show you what one of them looks like before we go on to the items for today. Now, I'm connected via wire here. I pay for 100 megabits, but let's see what I'm actually getting. All right. Download was 120, so I'm getting a little bit faster speed than what I'm paying for. And upload is usually around 12, and it's 11.84. And most of the tests are pretty consistent with that. You might want to try several of them to make sure that, you know, they're all uh, consistent. What you may find is some of them are, uh, uh, whoops, are, uh, are off a little bit, and that may only be because of what they connect to, because it can't be any faster than the site that you're connecting to, and it may not be quite as fast. So let's see, let's, um, I'm gonna pull this off and then close it because it was it's blocked by something that's part of the Zoom and it's gone. Okay, so let's go back up. Now, what I wanted to talk about, one of the discussions that got going uh, was about using 
antivirus and not using antivirus. I have some videos I'm going to share with you, and then we'll go ahead and start talking about the topics that are there. So let's uh, start with the videos. Uh, these are all videos from somebody called Leo Laporte. If you're not familiar with Leo Laporte, it goes back to the screensaver days many, many years ago online, or I'm, I'm sorry, on TV. Uh, some of the earliest TV information programs were from uh, screensavers, and they're actually still around at, as Twit TV. And that's one of the links that I do have on my page. But I, uh, he's suggesting that if you're going to, uh, that you should not use one of the antivirus programs, use the Windows Defender that's included as part of Windows. Let's find out why. I've got several videos where he talks about antivirus and also about uh, security. Let's take a listen to uh, each of these. Let's take a listen to this one first, and I'll full screen as soon as it starts. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. And Al's in Vista, California. Hi, Al. Yeah, hi, Leo. Um, my uh, an antiviral software is coming up for renewal. I pay, I don't know, 50 or 60 a year. Norton, uh, are they real? Are they really necessary? No. Or what version of Windows do you run? It's Windows Seven. I never, I, I didn't update to ten, uh, so I have Windows Seven. Yeah, you know, in ten now they they bundle Microsoft's own uh, antivirus, and I think that that's adequate for most people. In Windows Seven, uh, you have your choice. Uh, there is a free version of uh, Microsoft's antivirus, uh, the Security Essentials, they call it for Windows Seven at microsoft.com slash security underscore essentials, or you just Google Microsoft Security Essentials. I just use that. It's lighter weight. Uh, Norton's had some issues, frankly. Uh, oddly enough, a lot of the third-party antiviruses introduce more security problems than they fix, Norton in particular. Right? Yeah. Do they slow down the computer when you... Yes. Install? Oh, they do. Yeah. So the other thing that happened with antiviruses is they got in a race for features and became very bloated, and Norton was the worst. Oh. Uh, Symantec keeps telling me, and actually, I think uh, it's, uh, yeah, they keep telling me, oh, no, uh, it's this year it's lighter weight than ever. And then every time I try it, it's not. So, but a lot of that is driven by the market. I mean, we want more features. We look, you know, you look, remember when you used to go, remember the good old days you used to go to a store and like Staples or a computer store, and you'd look, and there'd be a box with software in the box, and you'd look on the back of the box, and they'd have these tables with all these check marks in it. Uh -huh. well, it really was a war to get the most check boxes, but the problem is, you know, people would buy that because, well, it has more check boxes than the McAfee, but, but it was just bloatware. It was added features that weren't necessary. So go with the lightweight security essentials. Do not renew Norton. So if I don't renew, will it un uninstall automatically? No, no. Oh, yeah. You'll have to uninstall it. In fact, you'll probably want to go to Symantec. They have, and this is true for McAfee too, remember it's an antivirus, so they have precautions against malware uninstalling it or d disabling it, right? Which makes it harder for you to uninstall. Get the tool from Symantec that's the removal tool, uh. and, and the Norton removal tool, and that's a better uninstall than the one they use. My and, goodness. Uh, yeah. If isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Leo. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, what was the um, what was the Norton exploit? I'm trying to remember. We talked about it on uh, Security Now. High severe. This was June 28th, so this was uh, less than a m couple of months ago. High severity bugs in 25 Symantec Norton products imperil millions. Tavis Ormandy, who is a Google researcher security researcher, said, these vulnerabilities are as bad as it gets. What? So you, wait a minute, let me get this straight. I bought a security program that made me less secure? Yes. Yes. Multiple critical vulnerabilities, not just in, by the way, the consumer Norton brand, but in the, the, the flagship product, the business product, the Symantec Endpoint Protection, messed up. They all use the same core engine. They all had the same exploits. 
which would allow a bad guy to access your system unaided. Now, of course, Norton's patched these. Well, I hope. <laughs> I hope, but it doesn't mean there aren't more of these. Why put software on your system that adds vulnerabilities and doesn't protect you from bad guys? That's a bad idea. You don't really need... These days, an antivirus is less useful than it used to be because viruses move so fast. You're really mostly interested in your behavior. An antivirus is, is a backup, and, and, but the problem is you know, it's not going to catch today's zero-day exploit because it's just too fast. So you have to be more careful, not the, not the antivirus. And certainly, putting something on your system that opens holes up is terrible. So, so let's, let's recap. Slows your system down? Check. Adds bloated features you don't need that sometimes even prevent you from getting online? Check. Protects you from antivirus, from a viruses, from malware? Not so much. Uncheck. Adds exploits and holes of its own to your system that bad guys can exploit? Check. It's got all the check boxes. I'd say don't buy it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask... Leo and Al's in Vista, California. Hi, Al. Yeah, hi, Leo. Um, my uh, an uh, antiviral software is coming up for renewal. I pay. It's starting over again. So I'm sorry. Uh, we'll shut that off. Uh, this got started because Stan was having a problem with one of his computers, and they determined it was malware bytes was causing the problem, and he couldn't get on using any of the. Uh, any of the browsers that he had, and once he removed the malware bytes, it worked properly, and he got that information from Microsoft's store in, in Orlando, and, uh, and I've been following these videos uh, that you're seeing on here. I've been following some of this, these newscasts that, uh, that Leo's been talking about, uh, and so I kind of put them together. So let's uh, listen to uh, this one's... Uh, a, sh a short one. Let's listen to this one and then we'll uh, uh, maybe I'll skip this. Is He's twit. Twit. Hi, Jim. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thanks, Kim. It's foolish to rely on an antivirus. In fact, I don't recommend antiviruses for two reasons. One, it gives you false hope. <laughs> Remember, I, I was you know just talking about this document thing on. Uh, on the Macintosh, no antivirus hits it. It finds it. And that's really the case. Viruses spread so fast now, they spread before the antivirus is updated. It can't be updated fast enough, which means you're going to get infected. And so you, many people, do what you just said you do. You go to sketch sites because I got an antivirus. That's really a mistake. And the antivirus has given you false confidence. The other problem is that increasingly we're seeing antiviruses be vectors doors open to malware and that's because in order for an antivirus to work on a desktop operating system it has to hook in very at a very low level and so virus authors say oh i don't have to do so much work i'll just hook you into mcafee or some or norton or and i'll use the fact that they're already in the kernel to launch my attack so over the last year we've seen at least three different antivirus programs be, be used as a front door to bad guys. In other words, two things. It gives you false hope because it doesn't work. And two, it's actually making your machine less secure. I'll add a third one. In many cases, it makes your machine less reliable and causes problems. Almost always, the first thing I do when somebody's having a problem getting online, I say is disable your security software. Don't waste your money on antiviruses. They don't help. Practice safe computing. All right, that's uh, a couple of the articles, and, and there's a couple of more videos and so on on here, but uh, there was an article about the massive ransomware attack, and let's take a look at that article. And uh, this is it here. There's a massive ransomware attack spreading, and that was the... Uh, uh, wanna cry or wanna it had a couple of names, but uh, it spread mostly because people clicked on something on their computer and it got into the network and it had the ability once it was in the network to spread within the network 
And so that's, and it was mostly Windows 7 machines that got attacked. But what it shows is that usually now what's happening when a lot of people are getting malware or viruses, it's because they clicked on something or they did something or they went to a website uh, and clicked on, uh, on something. So be careful where you go. Be careful what you click on. But sometimes even a website, going to a website, there can be something on that website that triggers it. So you don't even have to click on something on the website, just getting there. And sometimes it's an overlay. Uh, when you go to a website, they've hijacked and made it look like that website. But they've got an overlay there and they want you to put some information in. And then they say, whoops, it didn't work. And uh, uh, we'll have to figure out what's going on. And in the meantime, you've infected yourself. So please, please be very, very careful on what you do. Uh, and let's close this. And uh, take a look at these articles. Now, when I talk about TWIT, which is the week in technology, this is the TWIT website. And let's take a look at the latest because they have a lot of good podcasts every week. The other advantage that I really like about it is not only do they have videos, but you can also download MP3s, just the audio. And I found that I listen to those at night uh, with a headset on to go to sleep to. And sometimes they really put me to sleep quickly. And so I miss out on the news. Other times I play them through my. Uh, a sound system in my car from my iPad or my iPhone. I download them to that. There's the new screensavers. There's This Week in Enterprise Tech. There's the Tech News Today, which is every day. It's about 45 minutes long, uh, five days a week, and it's all about tech news, and that's how I keep up with a lot of things. There's something called Ham Nation, if you're a ham. Uh, there's a program once a week. There's Windows Weekly. Uh, sometimes it deals with the enterprise windows. So there's uh, Mary Jo Foley, who's the expert in the enterprise world. Uh, sometimes I get some gems from her, but a lot of times that's uh, above my pay grade. But the uh, other person who talks about windows is Paul Thorat. Paul's written a couple of the uh, manuals to uh, uh, windows over the last several years. <clears throat> and he has a, a lot of information and shares a lot and a lot of insight, a lot of opinions on the Windows Weekly, and that's usually a, a two-hour program once a week. And there's tech news today, as I mentioned. <clears throat> there's also the uh, uh, All About Android, Mac Break Weekly, uh, Triangulation, which I don't recall what that is. Uh, there's Floss Weekly. Again, I'm not sure. That's insanely fast queries and big data. Uh, security Now with uh, Steve Gibson, who's famous for uh, uh, a program that a lot of people use to check their hard, their hard drives. Uh, there's uh, Home Theater Geeks. Uh, this Week in Law, there's one on iOS, if I didn't mention that one. And so there's they have several weekly uh, episodes and have for many years. So if you have not tuned in to Twit, just go to twit.tv. And again, there is a link to that. Uh, let's see, let's make this a little bit smaller so I can close that out and come back. So that's the Twit. There's a link to that page and you can take a look at their podcast. Please wait till this one's over before you go there because that'll uh, uh, you'll start watching those and then you won't come back to me. Okay, let's talk about some uh, phishing and spam alerts. I found this website and let's go ahead and full screen it and zoom in on it so you can see it. There we go. And they say, what is e <coughs> email spam and phishing? Hang on one second while I clear my throat. Oh, 
hopefully I did have it shut off because that was a loud clearing my throat. Anyway, uh, what they have are examples of a lot of phishing emails and what they look like, what they, and you'll see that a lot of them look like they came from an actual uh, company that you may be familiar with. There's one that looks like it came from Office 365 and it has your email error and it says error in your mailbox. Your mailbox has exceeded. Uh, upgrade the mailbox quota. And when you click on that, you're actually, it's phishing. You're not going to Microsoft. You're going somewhere else. So if you look at where it came from, you'll see that this is on.mail.onmicrosoft.com. And that isn't really it. And then you keep going and it's supportplantquota.us.com. So it's not from Microsoft, although it looks like it is. Uh, here's something from U, uh, USPS, United States Postal Service. Uh, another one from uh, Office 365. Uh, here's one from Delta with their Delta logo. And, but you'll see that it's DeltaA.com, where it came from. It didn't come from Delta. So be careful what you click on. It may look real it may look real and it isn't so when you get these emails don't be tempted to click when you click and it takes you to a website at that point you may have already been infected just going to a website they have uh there are graphic when i say graphic uh some type of a photograph or something like that that can be affected uh, infected and it may be just a one by one graphic at the bottom with loaded with code that infects you. You won't even see it. So please, please be very careful when you go to websites or when you get emails for phishing. Uh, don't just respond. Uh, and uh, let's see, I think there was something else here that kind of explain some of the things that you can do. Uh, let me make this bigger this way so I don't have to keep minimizing this. Okay, so let's talk about Windows Defender Security Center. Here is an article about it. I'm going to actually show it to you, but there's a, this is the article. Uh, and by the way, I don't like PC World, Network World, and a few others because they, a lot of times, uh, something will pop up on my screen because I still use an antivirus program or they require Windows you Defender to... Windows uh, Defender used to be Microsoft's uh, basic antivirus software. There's an ad, the you got to click on you too lazy through PC to get World, you can't else. turn it off. But with the creator's update... So I'm not more. crazy about their articles. I'm going to close this. Uh, Google handles it worse than most uh, with the Google browser. But what I want to do is go ahead and, and go to the Windows Defender itself. And so let's take a look at how we do that. We're going to go to the Start menu. And here's a shortcut if you aren't aware of it. I'm going to click on the A, which gives me a dialing uh, set up here. And I can go to W, so it immediately takes me to the W's. And there's the Windows Defender Security Center. <clears throat> When I click on it, there it is. This is in Windows 10. I'm not sure if it's different in the creator version. Uh, you might want to take a look and see if you have it. Uh, I believe they updated some things in the Windows 10 creator version. But And how do you know whether you have Windows 10 Creator installed or not. Let's do that first. And I'm going to do that by going to Settings, System, and About. When you do that, you look at the version number. Mine is 1703. That means 2017 March, or 03, which is the Creator version. If yours says 16... 07, you have last July's <clears throat> update, 
And if you have one, it's, it's 15 something, you're very much behind and you have uh, one of the, uh, the original versions of Windows 10. <clears throat> so you want to, uh, uh, if you haven't, <coughs> pardon me, if you haven't gone to the uh, creator's version, that's not a big deal because you, they're, they're rolling that out slowly. You can force it. But if you're at, you should be at least the 1607 version. Anyway, getting back to Windows Defender Security Center. You'll notice that there are five parts to it. There's the virus and threat protection here, the device and performance and health, the firewall and network protection, the app and browser control, and the family options. Let's take a look first at the virus and theft, theft, threat protection. View the antivirus providers. So as I clicked on that, this is what opened up in the background, and it actually opened up my security and maintenance. And it says review recent messages and resolve problems. And it says nothing has, has been there. Under security, it shows I'm actually running EmmySoft anti-malware. <clears throat> I don't follow what uh, has been said by uh, people like Leo. I do use a third party because I paid for it. Uh, however, when it expires, I probably won't renew it. Uh, so it is turned on, but also when it's turned on, you can still have your Windows Defender running in the background as well. There's no more that you can only have one. Windows Defender will run in the background with anti-malware anti or antivirus software. And then the other is under maintenance. Check for solutions, view reliability history. And last run, uh, it was last run today at noon. And you can start the maintenance and it shows some in information about it. Let's look for, check for solutions. No new solutions found. Show reliability history. Generates a report. And I have found this report was interesting, and I hope you can see it, and I, I don't think I can make it bigger. And I'm sorry about that, but you can take a look on your own. But I was having some problems earlier this week, and let's see, maybe it was on the 6th. No, it wasn't the 6th. Let's take a look at the 7th. Yeah, I had my explorer.exe, which is all of my icons on the desktop and the taskbar, close out and restart again a couple of times. I don't know what caused that. And here it, it shows me that, it, yeah, it did stop working, and it shows me what time. And then let's view some technical details. Well, that's Greek to me. So it really doesn't tell me a whole bunch, but if I needed to go to somebody to find out what was happening, if it becomes a serious problem, I've got some information to tell some expert what it's showing as the reason that it stops working. And they might be able to tell from this uh, what that caused, or I could research some of these. I didn't think it was important enough and my time was too valuable to start researching it at this point because. Uh, as I said, uh, it, it's happened a couple of times, and it could be I had a ton of windows open. I was doing a lot of different uh, uh, activities. But let's look at some others. You'll see Excel stopped responding one day. And let's see if it tells me anything there. No, it just says stopped interacting with windows and was closed. See if more information about the problem is available. Check the problem history. And, uh, and it didn't say there was anything. So you can tell what some of the issues are that you're having. So these guys that, that pertain, uh, pretend to be uh, Microsoft uh, 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 so tech support and you call them or, uh, from a pop-up and they're fake and they come into your computer, they may look at something like this. Or they go in and they look at, at some other logs that you have you have problems every day. You don't know it because Windows handles it, goes by it, and you go on your way, and it's nothing that's really wrong with your computer. It's just two things try to do something at the same time, and, uh, and you had an issue. 
So by having the ability to look at, look at it yourself, you don't need to have somebody in a foreign country uh, tell you that your computer isn't working and that you've got to pay $150 so he can tell you uh, how to fix it, and he doesn't do that anyway, and all he does is lock you up or lock you out of your own computer. So uh, uh, take a look at some of these things yourself. This is the reliability monitor, and you can see that uh, uh, each of these days there was some kind of a thing. Here's, here's uh, yesterday, and yesterday my Mailwasher Pro stopped working, and, uh, and let's see, I had an update with Facebook, and I had an update with uh, the cumulative updates. I'm going to show you something about updates in a moment, too, that you want to check. Uh, to make sure yesterday I was having some issues and uh, The system was running slow some things were stopping on me and we'll take a look and see why here in just a moment so uh, That's something that you can find in this virus and that that uh, I can't even say the word threat today threat protection uh, So you want to take a look at that and then uh, as I just click the box itself uh, it says you're using other antivirus uh, providers view we just did and then here's the Windows Defender antivirus options and I could have it periodically scan I can turn that on just by clicking here and we're gonna say no and turn it back off but you can turn it on there Okay, let's go back to the home. I also, they're also along the side here. Device and performance health. Uh, there's a health report from today. There was no Windows update. The uh, Windows update had no issues. Storage capacity had no issues. And device driver had no issues. And this is where you find your fresh start. Now, your fresh start, be careful with this. This means a fresh start. It's a clean and up-to-date installation of Windows. This will keep your personal files in some Windows settings and remove some of your apps. So what this does is it brings you back to factory fresh but leaves your data. But you may have to install programs back onto your Windows. So Fresh Start is probably a last resort but not quite a last resort. The other last resort would be to wipe entirely and to reinstall. This is updating, uh, this is getting an up-to-date Windows version and then reinstalling some of the applications, but the data will still be there. And in some cases, this may improve your devices, uh, start up and shut down experience, memory usage, store apps and performance, browsing experience and battery life. It says in some cases, well, sometimes that doesn't always work as well. And then there's some additional information. And with Fresh Start, uh, you start there and you, you say get started. And I certainly don't want to do that because that will wipe all of my programs out. i got a lot of programs on here. I have done that on computers and then reinstalled the programs and all the data was still there. And in, case, in, in fact, a lot <clears throat> once I installed them, their settings were still installed and it picked up the settings from where they were. Other cases, I had to uh, reset whatever special settings I had for those programs. The next item in your Windows Defender Security Center is the firewall and network protection. And when I click on it, it says private discoverable network. Firewall is on, network is connected. In your public non-discoverable network, firewall is on, network is not connected. I'm not sure what the non-discoverable network is or public. Uh, I guess that's for the rest of the world to see. And probably the main reason why is I am connected wire with a wire, uh, with an Ethernet cable directly to my uh, <clears throat> to my router uh, instead of wireless on this computer, on my main computer. And then you can go and there are some things you can click on, allow an app through the firewall, uh, network and internet troubleshooter, firewall notification settings, advanced settings, and restore firewalls to the default. Let's take a look at the allow an app through the firewall. And it opened up a box behind it here, so let's take, bring that forward. This brings, and I wish I could make it bigger, I can't, it will not be bigger, so hopefully you can read it. 
uh, but maybe to make it so, you know, uh, so you can at least, I don't think control plus will make it bigger, but we'll try. No. Nope. Uh, anyway, uh, I did change what it did. Oh, there it is. So yeah, it did make it bigger, but it made it bigger within the box, made it wider. So let's do a control minus and see if I can get that back. No. Nope. Anyway, it shows several apps and then over to the side, I'm going to un full screen it and then, yeah, it brought it back size wise. Okay. So it shows me like the Acronis sync agent. Uh, it's both private and public. And so there are some programs. As I looked through this earlier today, uh, I found uh, one program that was troubling to me. Uh, let's see if I can f remember what it was and where it was. Um, it was a program that probably sh there shouldn't be any reason that it uh, can get through my firewall and I may play around with that. I don't like doing playing around with things just before a meeting because then it may not, <laughs> the meeting, I may not be able to get on for the meeting. Um, uh, I don't see the program now, but it's one of the programs that I have installed and it's, it was one that I can create flyers and I don't see it as, as I'm doing this, but you can see that there's a lot of programs that are set to be able to go through my firewall and some programs have to, some don't have to, uh, when they install, they know what they're supposed to do, but you may want to double check that, especially if you're knowledgeable. If you're not knowledgeable, don't go into these things and just start unchecking because then some programs that you want may not work or maybe some programs, uh, maybe you're, you may break something that you don't know how to fix afterwards. So just be careful when you do that. There is a network and internet troubleshooter. Let's take a look at see what that is. And did that open anything? It's here. That's the troubleshooter that's within settings. And you can go in and take a look at that. If something isn't working, run a troubleshooter. And these are all things, if these things aren't, any of these things aren't working, Bluetooth, hardware and devices, home group, and so on. If you click on them, it will find and fix any problems. And that's, you can get to that from here. Uh, firewall notification settings and so on. So uh, that's under the firewall and network protection, under app and browser control. These are settings uh, uh, that Microsoft has set up by default in my system. I have not changed any of them, but it's check apps and files, smart screen for Microsoft Edge, and smart screen for Windows Store apps, and you say, what is smart screen? And I had to go up and look at, look for that, so let's take a look and see what that is. And this is how I, if you don't know what that is, this is how I suggest smart screen, Windows 10. And here's how to reclaim, uh, how to disable it. Uh, but let's take a look to see what it is. Let's look at the FAQ. So you'll know what a smart screen, what smart screen is. And smart screen filter helps you identify reported phishing and malware websites and also helps you make informed decisions about downloads. Smart screen helps protect you in three ways. As you browse the web, it analyzes the pages and determines if they might be suspicious. If it finds suspicious pages, Smart Screen will display a warning page, giving you an opportunity to provide feedback. Smart Screen checks the sites you visit against a dynamic list of reported phishing sites and malicious software sites. If it finds a match, it'll give you a warning. And then smart, smart screen checks files that uh, you download from the web against a list of reported malicious software sites. Again, if you remember what we were looking at uh, in the Windows Defender, it says smart screen for Microsoft Edge and for Windows Store apps. It's not saying it does it for everything. And I'm not sure whether it does, 
Uh, it, it does check for unrecognized apps and files from the web, but uh, you might have to be using Microsoft Edge to get the full use of it. Again, this is a, it gives you a warning. You can tell it just block it, or you can turn it off if it bothers you, but I don't recommend turning any of these off. Going back to the on. And then the family options is the last set of the Windows Defender Security Center. And what we have here are some parental controls. You can help protect your kids online. You can set good screen time habits, <clears throat> keep track of your child's digital life, let your kids buy appropriate apps and games. If you uh, so desire, you can control that. And then you can see your family's devices at a glance uh, and view devices. I don't have anything on here, I don't believe. Connected. Let's see what it sees. Yeah, it may, because I think I have some things connected to my account. Um, no, I'm not going to go there. Okay. Not sure. Uh, I got to sign in and so on. So we won't do that. So. Uh, getting back to Windows Defender, we'll go back to the home page, and that pretty much is your Windows Defender Security Center. Uh, at, let's see, where are we time-wise? 219. So, uh, do I see anything in the chat box? Nope. Uh, I'll open it up to some questions before we go on to some other things. Uh, Stan, any questions from from there. Don't forget to unmute. <clears throat> okay, Yui. Um, I was having trouble finding the, uh, the unmute button, but um, I think in the group at the moment there are no questions, uh, although I did set uh, put one into the chat what was the name of that create flyer program that you were looking for <laughs> <laughs> the one thing i couldn't find right well, uh, I, I would just like the name of it so i can I, I can google it just create flyers but if you had a program you liked i would appreciate having the yeah name hang out a second let me uh find it i think it's under graphics here easy flyer creator 4.1 it was not free but it was not expensive either. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, let's go back. All right. So that uh, is some of what I wanted to talk about as far as security goes. Uh, Windows Defender seems to handle what you need. And like... Uh, uh, I'm hearing from people like Leo Laporte and several other websites. It's really all you need. But uh, one of the things that Leo mentions over and over again, the problem is uh, the, the term I picked up from Stan many years ago, and that's picnic. Problem in chair, not in computer. And... The problem being is that people are clicking on things or going places they shouldn't uh, as opposed to something happening on the computer automatically. In other words, when you get an email, being inquisitive or thinking that that person, because I know that person, that email has a link in it that shouldn't be a problem because I know that person. Well, that person maybe have been spoofed and doesn't even know that, the, that an email was sent with their name on it and a link that has malware or a virus uh, either associated with it or connected to it. So you need to be, or it's a phishing uh, email. So be careful what you click on. If you get one of those phishing letters and it says, uh, it's from the Wells Fargo Bank or the Bank of America, and you need to click here because your account is frozen or something has happened, or whatever, or in order to have something, uh, a, a check released or whatever reason, don't click on the link. Get out of that message, either 
go to your bank website and sign in as you would normally do, or call your bank and ask them if they're sending something like that out. And if they don't know, say, can I talk to your security people? And they will get you to the security people and ask them if this is being sent out. A lot of times the security people want you to forward it to them. Okay, Mike uh, has said he still disagrees with Leo and continues to use malware bytes paid version. It can actually check for updates every five minutes. So malware distributed uh, that they discover, they can update very quickly. However, Leo's comments uh, precede the latest versions of malware bytes anti malware, which is much more powerful and so far doesn't interfere with any version of Windows getting online. Just did a Google search and Nothing uh, uh, relatively new posted. However, Stan had a problem. He had malware bytes on, uh, installed on a computer and could not get to a website. And so there are problems with not just malware bytes, but any of the antivirus programs that can at some time create a problem. And if you do have a problem getting on, that is one of the first places that you want to check. It may not happen all of the time. But if it happens, it can get extremely uh, frustrating, and then you start thinking, oh, my whole computer is screwed up. I can't get online with anything. And that's what was happening to, well, it wasn't Stan's computer. It was uh, one of his uh, customers or clients. But uh, it didn't matter what browser they had. They couldn't get online. And yet, uh, and he couldn't, he couldn't get to a point where he could make it, get to the safe mode. When he finally figured out how to get to safe mode, and he did, and used the network uh, safe mode, and that was network uh, safe mode with network, which allows you then to get online, he was, uh, he was able to use the browser and go to websites. So it was not his computer, it was not his uh, router or his uh, uh, cable modem, it was definitely uh, software related. And so when he finally talked to somebody, they said just uninstall malware bytes. He did, and everything worked at that point uh, I, when he signed in and was online. So that's a place to look if you have a, pro a problem, Mike. Uh, somewhere down the road, you may have that same problem. And what, what you want to do with that uh, juncture is either to sign in as a different user that doesn't have malware bytes running or go into safe mode and try it. Safe mode with network, which gives you the uh, internet. Now, you if you're, go ahead. A couple of quick comments on that. The machine that I could not get online with, I further tested it. I, I have a version of Hiram, which allows network access. So I booted from the Hiram CD and was able to get online perfectly. Uh, so that completely eliminated the hardware. And I, I want to stress that the, the issue <coughs> flabbergasted me that the first thing that Microsoft said to do was let's take malware bytes out of the startup and, and just you know, completely uninstall it and bingo, there go your computer work. It totally fixed the problem. And I don't, I don't think this is going to work in all cases, but it just further illustrated to me, one of my other favorite sayings is that uh, this stuff is not nailed down anywhere near as firmly as they would have us believe. So you just have to keep an open mind and try all sorts of things. And if, it, if it's pointing that, that Windows 10 doesn't have to have the uh, anti-spyware, antivirus, uh, and theoretically, I've had several people from Microsoft, including at the Microsoft store, uh, a chap in India, uh, a supervisor as well, and uh, they just say that, that the new Windows 10 is perfectly safe with, with uh, Windows Defender, so we'll have to see. Yeah, and one of our online attendees, Bob, says a lot of times the virus program is trying to scan SSL connections and will stop a secure connection. Disabling scan for SSL connections will take care of the problem. And I'm not sure where you turn that off, Bob, if you uh, uh, get a chance, if you'll uh, put that in the chat box. Yeah, I've never even it. heard of that. Um, but by the way, the other thing that I'm 
with that particular client with the machine that it, it was, you know, it was a Windows update that did it because malware bytes was coexisting. They were able to get online perfectly. There was an, an, up, an update, and I don't think it was the creator, uh, the, the, the latest one. It was a relatively minor one, but after the update, the next morning is when this problem started, even with a hard wire. Why? It could see the Wi-Fi connection and the hard wire, but not connect with several different browsers. And the other thing that I take out of this is that that chap, actually it was his wife, no backup whatsoever. There wasn't hugely important data, but they had a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, music even, and it was their computer. So if you have to wipe and reload the system, it's no longer your computer. It's a brand new one. You've got to reinstall all the software and all the little gadgets and tricks and things that you had. And that can take days or weeks. So I am really, and that's part of why I wanted this flyer program. I'm going to start a campaign and, and email to all of my clients. If you are not using something like Mac Premium Backup to make a complete image of your computer, I'm not going to be able to help you if there's a crisis. And uh, another one that happened since then is a chap, listen to this, a, a, an HP laptop, 17 inch, his wife is writing a book on it, and she is using thumb drives and, and has it so that the computer sees the thumb drive when it comes in, so she got all of her there, but they took the computer from the living room, didn't shut it down, they just unplugged it, took it to the bedroom, plugged it in, and now nothing, no lights come on, Power button does nothing. I've tested the power supply. It's 19 volts perfectly. I called Hewitt Packard. Hewlett Packard spent an hour yesterday, and they had me do some tests that I've never heard of. Hold the Windows key and the letter B, and then hold the power button down for three minutes. Or three? No, I think it was 30 seconds. And that is supposed to release any static electricity that might have been built up. <laughs> Didn't do anything. So then hold the Windows key and the letter V as in victory. And that was supposed to reset the BIOS. Didn't do anything. But when I did those two tests, they said, okay, we need to see it. Ship it back to us. And, of course, one of the things that Hewlett Packard or Dell or Aces often does, when they get a machine, they're going to wipe and reload the system. And these people also have no backup, and it's their computer now. All of the programs they've installed, they don't want to go through all that. So, again, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm estimating it would probably take me three hours to download, install, run Macrium, get a backup of it, create the CD, test the CD to boot, and then test the, the, the file that's on the external USB drive to make sure it works. So, if that's three hours, I haven't picked the price yet, but I'll, I'll make something reasonable and give people an option to do if they if they don't feel they can do it themselves or if they don't want to. I, mean, I don't mow my lawn. I don't want to. I can afford to have somebody come once a week and take care of that. So. Anyway, end of story. Yes. Uh, if you're not backing up your computer, uh, it's something's going to fail sometime that you're going to wish you had. So backup is is part of your antivirus, anti-malware. Backup is very important. If you don't want to back up your programs, at least have a list of somewheres of all of your keys, which are your serial numbers, and your sign-in and password, your sign-in name and password for all of the programs that you have. You also want to make sure that uh, uh, if you are backing up, then it's not sitting, the backup isn't sitting next to your computer or connected 24-7. Some people back up to an external USB drive that they leave plugged into their computer. Well, think in terms of those of us here in Florida, when we have a hurricane go through, and let's say the room that your computer is in gets destroyed in that hurricane. If your backup is there too, guess what else is destroyed? Your backup. So you need to have your, you need to have, if you're plugging in an external hard drive and backing up, have two of them. Have one of them off-site 
either at a relative, a good friend, uh, a, a bank's uh, uh, safety deposit box, and then swap them out every couple of weeks, every month. At least you'll, if you lose a month's worth of information and work, it's not like losing everything. And if you are saving, if you are saving things on thumb drives, uh, every once in a while, you, you need to be checking those thumb drives. They go bad. Uh, and if your computer bombs while it's plugged in, they can get, uh, 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 I can't think of the word, but they can get scrambled too. So you need to be very careful in just relying on one piece of backup. Uh, as far as photos go, if, you're, if you have no other way of doing it, uh, si make sure you have a Google account and use Google Photos. And if you choose uh, not to save the original size, but a large size, which is more than enough, you have unlimited space on Google Photos. You have it uh, from every, and you can have it from any computer or phone, the same account. So if you take pictures with your camera, it will upload to your Google Photos. So when you go to your desktop they are, and sign into your Google account, there they are. And if your computer crashes and you, or you buy a new computer, when you sign into your Google account, there they are again. They're saved out on the cloud. Okay, there's a couple of notes on the chat box that I do want to cover before we go on. Uh, Bob said, uh, let's see, he added some things to it. I want to get back up to where, let's see, make sure that I'm in the right spot here. There's where Mike said something, where Bob said something. Oh, Bob said even more. Uh, let's see. Usually the problems in the advanced settings, uh, he knows McAfee, Kaspersky, and Norton have the option of disabling the scan for SSL connections. Uh, in, the Chrome, <coughs> in the Chrome forms, uh, he's cured many can't connect problems by telling them to disable that option. And uh, Bob, I know Bob does uh, work the uh, uh, Chrome forums and answers a lot of questions there. So he's one of our resident experts. Uh, he's out of this, uh, Sun City, Florida. And uh, so that's uh, good information. And then Mike said, a new Macrium Reflect, even the free version, will do an automatic scheduled image backup. If one is not savvy enough and gets help doing it, uh, then uh, from then on, it's pretty much an automatic to get an image backup. I still use uh, Cronus True Image. Their prices have been more reasonable, or at least they've had specials. You do, do need to buy a copy for each computer, but for $20, around $20 a computer, I think it's a worth, uh, per year, I think it's a worthwhile investment, and that's how I back up, and I back up to a couple of different hard drives, or uh, external hard drives, and, uh, and I back up uh, several computers that way. Then I also use a cloud backup that I got a really good price on. <clears throat> it was under $10 for the first year, and I think it's uh, about $25 a year uh, after that. And part of their service is they sent me an external hard drive, which I did a, uh, and, and some software, and I backed up to it and then shipped it back to them. And they preloaded it on the cloud because uploading to a cloud uh, backup is very uh, time consuming. And so by doing it that way, they were able to, within a week, have uh, uh, several hundred gigabytes backed up for me. And now it goes out every night at a predetermined time, as long as my computer is on, checks to see if there's any new or changed files, and then backs them up to the cloud. So all of my data is being backed up uh, to the cloud, as well as I'm saving it to an image uh, using uh, true image. And there are several services that do that uh, backup data to the cloud. But I recommend if you do that and you have a large amount of data, uh, a lot of data, that you might want to consider one that has the free service where they send you a hard drive to preload everything for you. 
I have a question or comment from Bob Black. Sure. Well, hello, Huey. Um, a couple of years ago, actually one eight years ago, according to my um, email, um, Sean Keen, one of our members, uh, introduced us to a program called Crash Point. Are you familiar with that? Stan, would you repeat that? I didn't hear it, and I'm sure the other people did not yes. hear it. Um, Bob commented that 1.8 years ago, uh, Sean Kane introduced us to a program backup system called Crash Plan. And I think Bob's question was, are you familiar with it? And have you used it? What do you think of it? Yeah, I used it for a couple of years because I had a, uh, <clears throat> a free account. Uh, it's not free, and uh, it seemed to work fine. I never had to restore from it, so I never had a problem with it. But uh, it was more expensive, uh, and I felt more comfortable having uh, having uh, the true image backup as well as something in the cloud. I don't remember if Crash Plan. I think it's strictly a data plan as well. It is not image. So it's one right. of those that are out there. Uh, what's the big one, uh, Stan? And I can't remember the name of it that uh, you hear advertised a lot. And uh, one yeah. time I, uh, a cloud-based uh, backup system. It'll, it'll come to me. The crash, the crash plan thing was rather unique because you did everything over the Internet to another computer. It could have been your wife's and another room in the house or a buddy or that kind of thing, you could swap back and forth and store the, uh, the data, but it was data only. I'm quite sure it was not image. And uh, to me, having an image is very important. And, yeah, uh, and uh, Judy uh, reminded us it's carbonite was the one I was trying to think of. Exactly, yeah. Okay, let me look. Uh, let's see, I, don't, I may have closed that backup system up, and I think I did. Um, Oh, I, have I, I think it's, it's it's either A drive or I drive. I know I have both, and I don't remember which one it is. Uh, let's see, A drive. Let's see. It must be I drive then. I drive. Uh, yeah, it's I drive, but it's got an E. <laughs> Let me open up the program. Let's see if it's going to come up on the screen. And I can give you some information on it. It's relatively inexpensive, but they, they run some deals every once in a while, you, or somebody will have a special on it. Uh, yeah, put it here. It's called iDrive, and you can specify what folders you want to back up. And I can tell it to start immediately a backup, and you can see that it figures out how much I have and when it was last modified. Uh, it, it's populating and it's going out there. Hopefully, it's not affecting our speed here. Uh, I've got uh, uh, two terabytes of space, uh, and I'm only using uh, 665 gigabytes of it. Only, <laughs> he says. Uh, <laughs> But you can see I have all my documents, my downloads, my pictures, my videos. Uh, all of these are backed up, plus my desktop uh, are all backed up. And you can see how much I've got backed up. Uh, under my downloads, I've got 106 gigabytes. Uh, my documents, I've got 114 gigabytes stored on this cloud storage. And uh, it's iDrive. And I don't have an address for it if you need it. Uh, uh, let me know, and uh, uh, we can search and see if we can find some kind of a special. I think it's around it's it's around fifty dollars a year, is all it is for two gig uh, two terabytes of space. I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, quit the application. We'll say yes, and it'll go away. Okay, for those of you who want to use an antivirus, in spite of what we've said today, uh, Malwarebytes does have. Uh, <clears throat> an anti-malware that runs in the background and includes, I believe, an antivirus as well. But here is an article, Best Free Antivirus, for those of you who like free. A vast uh, Bob G goes to user groups around the country and demonstrates the free version of Avast. 
uh, and and uh, I believe I have it running on our laptop. Uh, AVG is another one that a lot of you have used or are using, Avira, and then of course Windows Defender are tested on here. And so I am not going to go through this article. I'll let you do it. I, there's a link on the page, but it scores each one of them. Uh, you'll see that uh, Microsoft Defender has got four out of five stars. Uh, they say Avast is five out of five. So they're looking at it in a different point of view, but again, go through that article and get some ideas if you're using uh, an antivirus or want to use one, one of the free ones, uh, go ahead and read that article before you choose which one you want. Okay, how do you check, for, let's see how we doing for time. I got just a couple of minutes here. Uh, how do you check for Windows updates? Let's go ahead and uh, this is an article. I will show you how to do it, but there's an article to tell you how to, how to do it, but it's a lot easier if I just, uh, I'll close that. I'm going to go here. I go to settings. I go to uh, system. Uh, system. And, and about. About. about And uh, and that's what I did show you earlier, and I just wanted to double, sh I thought I had, and this is where you can see which versions you have, but that's not what I wanted to show, Stan. Um, hang on a second. Let's go back again and go back to settings and update and security. I'm just checking on, on the club's ASUS, and it's a 1607, so it's not, not the uh, latest creators no but you got the latest one up to that and as you're doing updates it's updating that version of it so you want to make sure that you're doing the updates on a regular basis got it. now if I click on check for updates it takes quite a while to do but it did say uh, when I checked last at, at 8:52 this morning I was up to date but there's an update history and you can go there and take a look and it'll show you now there was an accumulative update for Windows 10 version 1703, which is the version I have, the, the creator uh, version, that was successfully installed yesterday. But if you look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20, how many more? A lot more, uh, 22, 23 attempts, and it failed. Well, I probably had something open that was causing that, but it finally did update sometime yesterday and update to, to that version. Now, also, there are some options when you're trying to update. If you do get one that fails, and let's click on one here, uh, sometimes uh, it, it tells you what, when I click on it, on any of them, whether installed or failed, it tells you what that will do. But if you go to more info, I think it takes you to the knowledge base. But it gives you information on what that particular uh, update does. And then the other thing that you want to look at, and I got to remember where it is, uh, recovery options update. Let's go back to settings here. Change the active hours, restart options, and advanced options. I'm trying to think. There is a place, uh, choose when updates are installed. And there's also a way, and I don't recall off the top of my head right now, because I didn't think of this when I was putting this together to uh, research it. There is a way that if, if a particular update doesn't install and it's something you really don't need, there is a way to tell it, don't try anymore. And uh, if, that, if that's something you need the answer to, email me. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'll research it and find it. And if I think about I'll research and find it and put it in my notes anyway. Uh, so I'll have it for next month. So there is a way in which you can 
uh, shut off a problematic update that just doesn't just doesn't work. So uh, uh, and always check for updates and and do check your update history so you'll have an idea what's updating and what isn't. But yesterday I was having certain time periods when I was trying to do something and everything just kind of stopped and then I'd wait a little bit and it would work. Well, now I understand why it was trying 20 some odd times to install an update and uh, that was what was uh, slowing me down. So let's go ahead and close that out and go back to our meeting notes. We're almost do done. Do, you, do I need to finish up? Do you, is your speaker there and ready? Can we discuss that for a moment? Okay. Uh, and uh, there are a couple more people have, have joined us since we last spoke. Uh, Howard Friedman came in, as did Bob Black. Um, so I'm advising everyone now, we do not have a speaker. I found out very late that um, Glenn Cofield from Smart Guys was not going to be able to make it. And uh, I have something from the APCUG Speakers Bureau lined up that we can do. Or we could do one of those twit uh, things that you were just talking about. If you have a favorite one of those, you could stay with us and, and you know, it's a small group so we, we can decide what we want to do. But my next Im important mission is a pit stop. So I'm going to. Okay, let well, let me finish the last two items and I'll do a couple of the speed checks to kind of compare them. And I'll finish up and finish up the recording and then we can discuss what you're going to do after that. Okay. Okay, so those of you who are online uh, uh, and want to stick with us, uh, please do. Uh, I'll, I'll stay on probably have another 10 minutes or so. Uh, so when we did the how to check for Windows updates, uh, how to make access to the control panel easier. Uh, sometimes you want to get to the control panel. And this was an article that uh, talks about that uh, because some of the control panel uh, is still available to us, although we use the settings uh, some of those uh, items are different, uh, and you can get to them that way. However, let's, uh, where are we? We're at this one. What I want to, sh I'll go ahead and show you. According to uh, the article, and what I'm finding out is Microsoft has been hiding the access to a control panel more and more with each of their big updates. And so it used to be that if you would go to the start button and right click, you would get a list of a lot of the things that you want to get to. Apps and features, power options, event viewer, system, device manager, network connections, disk, uh, disk management, computer management, a lot of the uh, management parts of Windows, uh, the task manager, settings, file explorer, search and run, Control panel used to be in that. If you're running an earlier version of Windows 10 or Windows 7, you will probably find control panel in there. But right. in the creator version, it is not. Hmm. And so to find it, this is what the suggestion is. Go to your start button and just click on it. And then in the box in the bottom, type in start typing control and you'll see it comes into the top where it says desktop app. Right mouse click that and pin it either to start or to your taskbar. Let's go ahead and pin it to the taskbar. Now it's down here. I can go ahead and close this box out now, the start box, it's gone. But now if I click here and it's on my taskbar, if I click here, bingo, there's my control panel and right now it's showing small icons I can go to the large icon version or I can go to the category version so uh, and I like the large icons so there's my control panel and it will always be available if I leave it down here or as I said earlier I can pin it to the start uh, button or uh, and then it's, it's already there. And if I want to unpin it, all I have to do is unpin from taskbar. It's, it's no longer, it's, it's still there because it's open, but when I close it, it will go away. So you can get to the control panel easier in the 
latest version or in any version, you can pin it to the taskbar to make it available for you. So if you're doing something uh, that you're re that's requiring you to go back and forth to the control panel, that's one way to have it uh, available to you very quickly. Question from Ted. Sure. Really? Doesn't all of those things on the taskbar cause your computer to take longer to boot up? Did you hear the question? Yeah, uh, they've got to. They've got to be. He, for those that couldn't hear uh, that are uh, online or in the recording, uh, mm -hmm. he asked, uh, "Don't uh, all of the things that are in the taskbar uh, require the boot time to take a little bit longer?" The answer is yes, but if you're in a project and you're using the same thing over and over again during that project, having the boot time uh, a little bit longer, but to have uh, the tool that you need whenever you need it quickly, you're not booting over and over again. Most people uh, who are in a project will have their computer on all day long working on that project. So if you've got to open and close your control panel, having it there makes it much more convenient for you. If it's on your desktop, as you can see, getting to my desktop is not the easiest thing because I've got a, a, a big window open, but a lot of times I'll have eight or 10 windows open and getting to something on the desktop is not an easy task where it's, if it's on the uh, taskbar, it just makes it much quicker. I have another, another thought. I like putting it on the desktop and I, you can do that just by creating an icon and, and type in C-O-N-T-R-O-L and it'll find control.exe. Right. Well, you can, you can make a shortcut to anything and you'll see I've got a few over here. All you do is find a blank spot on your desktop, right sure. mouse click, yep. go to new yep. and shortcut. It will bring up, it says, type the location of the item, find the location of what you want. Well, let's see, this PC. Control.exe right, right here. If you, know, if you know what the file is, yeah, if you know that's the name of the file. But let's say you don't. The Windows key and D. Hold the Windows key, press D, and bingo, you're at the desktop. Right, and let's, uh, but let's go find a file here under CFCS virtual, and let's find something from today's. Uh, let's see, 2017 06. And let's take, uh, well, I've got one for the cover picture, but let's take uh, uh, the speed test. I got a text file out there. Is that up there? No, let's, um, let's see. There's a PDF file here. Let's take that and I'll say OK. So that's the file. And I say next. And let's call it. Uh, uh, Win 10 PDF and tell it to finish. There it is, Win 10 PDF. And if I double click it, come on, it's opening. And there is a Windows 10 Fix It Guide from Computer World. So I now have it on my desktop, and then if I don't want it on the desktop anymore, I just right mouse click, and I tell it to delete. It's not deleting the item because it's a uh, shortcut. It just deletes the shortcut. The article is still there, and I've, and I've cleaned up my desktop. Now, you'll also notice on my desktop, uh, one more thing here. Let's, uh, uh, let's move this up here and minimize. I, all of these little b black lines, they're drop-down menus. I use a program called Fences from Stardock.com. And so instead of having a 50 million different uh, icons on my desktop, I have them in topics. So if I want to find something to do with PDF, uh, there's all of the programs that I use for that, all of the uh, links. And then I keep some because they're most used. I keep them open all the time instead of a drop down. So uh, it gives me some drop down capabilities. So that's called fences. And let's go back to the last item here. And then I'll just do the speed test and then I'll turn it back over to you. Can you still get Windows 10 for free? The answer to that is yes. Here is an article and the link to it. There's a couple of ways you can do it. There's one that Mike and I tried 
and that was that you can uh, uh, click and utilize any of the accessibility uh, access programs and that uh, qualifies you to getting the free upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10 still and it works I did it about a month ago Mike did it also about a month or two ago but also there's another way they say now uh, that you can and this article explains how to go about doing it that you can get uh, in contact with Microsoft and uh, with the, you notice that there was a free upgrade offer uh, and uh, it's, uh, let's see where he talks about it you contact Microsoft and just uh, tell them that uh, that you would like to get a free upgrade and they give it to you uh, so uh, uh, by all means read that article if you are still on Windows 7 and would like the free upgrade to Windows 10 if you're not running Windows 10 I really suggest it for security purposes <clears throat> it's much more secure uh, there's a lot more help now for it uh, for Windows 10 than there is in Windows 7 and I have not found any issues uh, a lot fewer issues should I say than I did with Windows 7 and almost uh, and almost none the last item uh, that I'll go ahead and cover whoops where'd they go uh, go back to the page are the speed tests I showed you the smart speed uh, Xfinity has a speed test I'll just show you what these look like uh, click on it again remember the one test that we did was it showed me at about 120 download and 12 around 12 up this shows 117 which you know that's within the ballpark and so it's it's pretty close to being the same uh storage force internet speed netflix fast i use this a lot when i'm uh working in a in a say mcdonald's or i'm using somebody's Wi-Fi somewhere I'll go ahead and do it's fast.com it's just a website you click it and it just shows you the download doesn't show what you upload but it's it is fast and uh, and I do like it because uh, it quickly tells me what my internet connection is uh, Ookla is the one that uh, uh, Bright House and now Spectrum uses and the problem with it is it's got all kinds of ads all over it and you got to be careful what you push but you can change the server and the location of where it is and my iPhone has an Ookla app which I can use and if I click on go I hope this is it yep this is going from this is just going to Tampa from Bradenton this is the one that spectrum uses if they're checking my my connection because I am a spectrum uh, customer but you can see that it's 119 so we're right in that same ballpark and you and you can see that the uh, upload is about the same remember that download is anything that you're looking at on the web you're downloading because it's out on the web and you have to download it to view it you're not actually looking at a, a web page you're downloading it looking at it on your computer uh, and then upload is if if you have to send something or you're sending information or you're replying to something you're uploading it and uh, so that speed really doesn't have to be as fast uh, I do know that the uh, Fios from uh, from Verizon uh, advertises you get the same upload speed as you do download so if I had 120 download I'm going to get 120 upload so if uploading uh, is an, is important to you then you might want to look at a Verizon internet connection as opposed to say uh, a spectrum or uh, uh, and I'm not sure what Xfinity and some of the other ones do and so uh, those are the items that are on that page the only other thing that will show up on that page is after this I will put the recording of this meeting up there 
And at this time, uh, Stan, uh, any final questions? I'll stop the recording, and then we can uh, yak a, a little bit, and then maybe the people that are online can, uh, uh, yeah. if they want, they can not join, and I probably am going to call it a day as well. But let's right. uh, go ahead and talk. I have a question from Howard. Yeah, very simple. Windows 10. How do we get to the You'll have to repeat that. I did not hear them. In Windows 10, how do you get to view the various drives? Did I get that right? Yeah. I used to go to the word computer, 7, and I could see everything. You know? He's saying okay. that in Windows 7, it was simple. Just go to the word computer, and he would see the drives. He's not sure how to do it in Windows. Okay, I placed a link in my in, in my taskbar, but it's called This PC. And if you find This PC, uh, let me right mouse click here. If you right mouse click here, uh, if you click File, let's see, I don't see it there. You click on File Explorer, it will open up File Explorer, which is the same as, let me click uh, this piece, I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna click on this PC down here, it's the same thing. And it, so you need to find this PC and, and make it a, and I'm not sure whether it's by default in the taskbar or I put it there. I, uh, I, I, have, a, I have an icon on the desktop of the club Asus that says my computer, which takes me to file, <clears throat> Explorer, and you have to click on this PC at that point. But if you take this PC and make it make it a, uh, a a link on your desktop, and let me show you a trick too on on, on anything that's on your desktop, and we'll finish with that. Uh, let's say I've got uh, uh, this, and it happens to be uh, um, this. No, that I don't want to use that. Let's uh, well, let's just take this right here. I'm going to right mouse click. Uh, let's see. I got to make sure it's the right button here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to right mouse click and drag it down here. And notice, and, and I don't know, don't know if you can see it or not, but it says pin to Irfan view. That's not where I want to pin it. I want to pin it in, so maybe maybe a picture doesn't work that way. So I'll cancel. Uh, let's take the let's see, mail washer is already down there. Well, let's take another. Let's take a utility here. Uh, let's take something called Always Sync. I'm going to right click this, and I'm going to drag it over here. Pin to taskbar and let it go. It's now pinned to the taskbar. So just by right mouse clicking and dragging any icon. It's still there, but it's also now pinned on the taskbar. And then if I want, I can unpin it by clicking it as well. Oops. I just clicked it. So yeah, there it goes. It went away. So you can pin, if it's not already there, you can pin this PC to your taskbar. And then just leave it there. And I would suggest I do it because I'm doing it all the time. Uh, I, do, I don't use the uh, uh, Windows uh, uh, program, the Explorer program that Stan uses. So what I do sometimes is I'll do this one time, and then I'll do it again. And so now I got two windows, and I can go to two different folders. Ted just brought up a very good suggestion, and that is the Windows key. You hold that, and you hit the letter E, and that brings up exactly where we were file explorer and then you have to click what well, you have you have the drives on the side uh, or, or you just click on this right piece. yeah yeah there's a lot of ways you get to it sure so uh, uh pretty much it uh i've covered everything uh thank you everyone everyone for attending and for those of you online thank you for uh, spending your uh, uh sunday hours with us uh, the recording should be available. Uh, I shouldn't have to do any editing, so I will just uh, upload it to YouTube sometime this evening. And once it's ready, it will be, uh, uh, I'll embed it on the page. 
And let me go ahead and uh, let's see, stop the recording.